It's another exciting episode of the BRR show, which is the business, relationship, and real life issues show. It's one in which we have conversations from different lenses other than that which you're used to. This episode promises to be another exciting one. And I am so grateful, especially to all our fans, our friends, people that have reached out on social media, shared our posts, shared our videos. We want to say a very big thank you to you all. You make the dream work and we are very grateful to have you on board with us. And on this episode today, we have a question that was sent in by one of you. And still, we have Tayo Olusola to help us dissect through this question. We'll go on a quick break and when we return, we'll read through the question and have him delve right in. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. We'll dive right into the question that was sent in by one of you. Here's the question. Dear Oluwati, my wife is extremely jealous. She does all she can to ensure I have no female friends. She cuts every line of communication with them. It's even as bad as her going ahead to call some of, some of them to leave her husband alone. She did this to my boss at work. I'm honestly tired. How do I make her trust me enough to let me be? Please note, I've always been faithful to her. And as a matter of fact, she was my first and only girlfriend. Hmm. Here's the question. And I would imagine that there are many more people that are in these shoes. And so Tayo Lushola, what do you have to say? Wow. Is it a good time to be here once again, viewers? This is a very interesting story. For me as a therapist, jealousy is a feeling of resentment towards a person. Be probably because of one advantage okay. or success the person is having over you. It's a feeling which shows in character, which shows in behavior. But we need to look at what actually are the causes of jealousy. Okay. Number one, probably a sense of abandonment, a feeling that she could be abandoned along the line, a feeling of uh, wrong self-image, low self-esteem. You feel the other person has more clout than you. You understand? Those okay. are the reasons. But well, you know what? Looking at this scenario very well, the two people in this relationship have a responsibility of redressing the issue. It's good. It's the man that came up with this report that is seeking for help. But there's more that the man is going to do to help the wife to gain mastery of herself and to increase her own self-worth. Yeah. You understand? So, I f strongly feel that it's not just about the husband, it's about the woman. What is the self-esteem all about? How has she developed it over time? What is her own personal, uh, personality profiling? She will definitely need help. And that's the reason why the man should not look at it from his, or from his own point of view alone. He should be seeking help for his wife. And the first thing I would like the man to do is to be transparent. Of course, he said he's been faithful. Well, that is from his, his own perspective. Own perspective. perspective. Absolutely. We need to hear from the wife's side. He may feel he's faithful, but is it transparent? Mm. Is it transparent enough? Different things, faithful and transparent. Yeah. Okay. Faithfulness is what you know about yourself. You understand? You feel you are doing what you're supposed to do for your wife. But is your wife seeing you in all the lights that she needs to see you? Um, you know, some people feel that it's only about physical infi sexual infidelity. What about economic, financial uh, uh, fidelity? There's financial fidelity. There's information fidelity. Okay. There's sexual fidelity. Interesting. Are you transparent? Okay. I mean... Some of us, our wife doesn't even know so much about us. 
All she knows is that we go to work and we come back. She doesn't even know the role that we play in our office. Wow. She's not even aware of how much how, aware of how much we collect a salary. So how transparent are you? Transparency is key. It's defined as the, the, the quality of being transparent. You understand? So, I mean, you have friends that your wife is not friends to. See, some of us, for example, I, I, I'm so glad that I have a lot of things to say about my own marriage as regards this question. In 26 years, my wife has not told me she wants to go and greet a friend. And in 26 years, nobody has ever come to my house to come and greet my wife. What? As friend. Yeah. So how do you want such a woman to be comfortable when the husband is now the popular jingu and is the friend of the whole world? Do you know that sometimes my wife will say, you know what? Immediately we get to the gate of the church, she says bye-bye. Why? A thousand and one people want to greet me. Between the entrance <laughs> of the gate into the church, my wife just said, Baba, I'll see you after the service. Wow. Because she can't afford to wait. There's no day I come back from church that there's no stamp of lipstick and pancake on my body. Because everybody wants to hug Tayo Lushola. Everybody wants to greet Tayo Lushola. You understand? Okay. Don't you think such a wife, if she's not secured in herself, we feel jealous. Is it all about being secured? Because there, these are things that um, other women would see and say this one. You call it security, but people call it red flags. Wait. When you talk about red flags, it simply means that you don't know who you are dealing with because the person is not transparent. Okay. That's why I'm talking about transparency. If you know, I mean, there's no friend that my wife doesn't know. I will be the one to come and tell her about her. Whether female or male, I will tell her. She's aware that I'm going to be in this studio today. She knows who I'm coming to meet. Are you understanding me? So, because I will always carry her along. I'm open. I'm an open book before her. See, if you want your wife to trust you, you need to work at being trustworthy. Okay. If you don't work at being trustworthy, she won't trust you. I mean, I'm leaving the office. I say, ah, sweetheart, I'm just leaving the office now. I should be in at home in 30 minutes. How long has something came up? I need to branch somewhere. Ah, sweetheart, I just realized I need to branch somewhere now. I'm branching somewhere now. When I branch at the place, I'm leaving. Oh, sweetheart, I'm just leaving the place. And whenever she calls me, I pick the call. I don't even say because I'm already in the estate. I say, oh, how are you? Where are you? I just entered the estate now. I should be at home in two minutes. And in two minutes, I'm back. Accountability. You kind of paint it a different way. But you know when it is that we receive calls like this, it sounds like he wants to know everything about me. She wants to know everything about my She's not a monitoring spirit. You are accountable to her. Don't tell me why should she call you. You are accountable to her. She's accountable to you. In marriage, there's what we call governance principle, marriage governance principle, just like you have it in business world, corporate governance. We have marriage governance. And one of it is accountability. You are accountable to your wife. Your wife is accountable to you. Okay. She can ask you all manner of questions and you must, M-U-S-T, you must capital. answer her. Mind you, asking questions is different from questioning. Okay. Questioning has to do with casting as passion on your integrity and doubt on your personality. Okay. You don't question each other. Questioning talks about probing. Yes. Nobody wants to be questioned. Nobody wants to be probed. Or well, you can ask questions for clarity, for goodness sake. Oh, where are you now? Oh, I'm just leaving the office. So that she will know whether she should start preparing your food or not. It's a question for her to be effective. If anything happens to you, she's the first person that we ask. So don't call your wife a monitoring spirit or your husband a monitoring spirit. You think because your husband is asking where are you, she's mon I mean, he's monitoring you and she's, uh, he's, uh, he's telling you about. No, it's all about accountability. So but when you're talking about jealous, jealousy, it's a resentment. I mean, you see, somebody, my wife sees me with you now and suddenly resents you or resents me. For being with you. You know that way you feel you should be the one to be with the person. Or you feel that I belong solely to you. For goodness sake, your wife does not belong solely to you. Your husband does not belong solely to you. 
She's not sent to this world for you alone. He's not sent to this world for you alone. You are meant to come and impact this world. So if you are privileged to be the one he will be spending the rest of his life with, then you should take it as a privilege, not a right. Mm. Are you understanding me? All you need is trust and openness. And enjoy your life. Because you cannot make your husband a dedicated resources. Just as your husband cannot make you like an asset that he bought, that he must put in the, in the city room and say, you cannot go anywhere. But I detest... Is that have this kind of scenario where it says that once you pay the bride price and the wife is yours, it kind of like cuts you from even your family. It is wrong. Okay. It's lack of understanding. Some, some man will say you are spent, some man will say you are spending too much time on phone with your mother. Exactly. How dare you say that? You don't own anybody for goodness sake. It's an aberration. It's a misplacement of priority and it's a lack of wisdom. They didn't dash the woman to you. Understand, marriage is a partnership, not a sole, propri sole proprietorship. I have said it before and I will always say it. Some people will say their wife cannot go and do PhD, cannot go and do master's. How dare you say that? It's lack of understanding of what your role is as a man. You are not a god over her life. You don't own her. If she tells you she's leaving the marriage, you cannot say by force she must stay there. Can you? If your wife says she's leaving you, can you say she cannot leave you? There's no way it is written now. She chose you. It's her choice. If she didn't say yes to you, can you marry her by force? If you didn't propose to her, can she come and marry you by force? Let's respect this choice for goodness sake. I chose you. You chose me. You didn't buy me, and I didn't buy you. You can't make me a dedicated, a dedicated resources. I can't make you an asset like a television I bought. Let's respect the will of individual. That's what marriage is a call to freedom. So don't come and feel jealous because I have friends that you don't have. It's funny because you say marriage is a call to freedom. Freedom! But for a lot of people, even when friends get married, and then you realize that your friend is no more speaking to you because they say, ah, you are now married, oh. So they kind of like make you feel like you're caged. So you really cannot hang out or have conversations. It's lack of understanding. So when you say marriage is a call to freedom, I think that it resonates a lot and would set some people free. Yeah. From the mindset of thinking that marriage is if you are a man there and your wife is feeling in bondage, you are doing something wrong. If you are a woman there and your husband is feeling caged, you are doing something that is wrong. Thank you for staying with us. You are still on to the BRR show where we have conversations that are through lenses that are different from what you would regularly find around. And so, before the break, we had a conversation where a fan of ours sent in a question regarding jealousy. And I know we've spoken about the man because he was the one who sent in the question. But the caveat is that this is a one-sided report and did not heard from the lady. It's because of me. <laughs> I'm telling you. There's so many Ashwabis that we have today. It's because of me. Let's do her. She wants to be in her home, but it doesn't pay any family. We need support systems. Most of the gift we have today is because, I mean, we've enjoyed so much based on relationship. And my wife cannot deny it. And that's why she supports me. Any friends that I talk about, she's in support because she knows that I don't keep friends that does not take us towards our destiny. Show me your friend. Either work with the wife, shall be wise. The company of the fool shall be destroyed. She will always appreciate the kind of friendship that I build. Whether male or female, because my wife told me, she said, you know what? I'm never moved when I see you in the midst of a thousand ladies. Why? Because I never thought you would come all the way from Kuala State to come and pick me. In spite of all the women that I saw around you, you didn't pick any one of them. It's me you came to pick. Ah. That's a level of trust, I mean. <laughs> because of transparency. Oh. She has seen, there's one good see finish. She's seen me finish. I mean, I'm in the office, somebody is enticing me, want to kiss me. And I said, where are you? Say, I'm at home. Said, my body is doing this, I'm coming. I can't afford this lady to destroy my life. I'm coming down to you. And I go on and I have a quick snacks and I go back to the office. Huh? <laughs> there's three cost me their snacks. Mm. You understand? So my wife knows I don't keep the way I feel part time away from her. 
It's trust and transparency. If she knows you that this is who you are, you are bare before her, she will tell you, go to blazes. My wife, husband is coming back home. So that's why I said the man needs to actually work on being trustworthy and be transparent. However, the side of needing help for the woman is also there to be able to deal with what I call a character. It's what we call character development. And I think we'll talk more about that in the course of this session. Wow. The conversation has only just started. I love that statement. We are going to go on a quick break now. But when we return, we still have time on the show like here with us. Just stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us. You're still on to the BRR show where we have conversations that happen through lenses that are different from what you would regularly find around. And so before the break, we had a conversation where a fan of ours sent in a question regarding jealousy. And I know we've spoken about the man because he was the one who sent in the question. But the caveat is that this is a one-sided report and we've not heard from the lady. And so continuing this conversation, we tell Lolo Shola, delving into what you feel the lady should be doing or more. Sometimes you wonder that could it be as a result of experiences that she may have had in the past, where it is difficult for her to trust the man that she's with. What do you think about that? Yeah, thank you, Oluwati. Like I was saying before the break, the man need to work at being trustworthy. Why? Because if you leave any high order of doubt as per who you are, your wife can begin to think otherwise. Because this feeling of resentment, like I defined, you know, I said it's about, I don't want us to match it with not trusting. I don't want us to match it with as if there's something the man is doing. Because jealousy has nothing to do with what somebody is doing. It's like envy. The word jealousy simply means envy. So whether the person has done something wrong or not, you are just looking at the fact that you want this person alone for yourself. Honestly, that's what jealousy means. So let, don't let us mix it with something else. Jealousy is simply, I'm jealous of you. Why are you jealous of me? Because you are better than me. Because there's something that you are doing that I can't do. Because there's something that you have that I don't have. That's what jealousy is all about. So don't let, don't let us even look at as if the man has done something. There's nothing the man could have done that could warrant the wife to be jealous about him. Because jealousy is simply envy and resentment because I'm at advantage or I have one success that she's not having. But we are saying that as much as we don't want to put the responsibility on the man, we are saying that there are things that the man can do that can help his wife. Because the responsibility of every man is to do things in such a way that the self-esteem of the wife can be boosted. Okay, so in this kind of situation, does it mean that you're actually supporting the behavior of the wife? Because, I mean, the question that was sent in was by the man. Yeah. I see that you kept on addressing this man. Does it mean that the woman does not have I'm still going there. Okay. I'm still going there because I don't want a situation why we are going to look at the man is doing something. Because from what you said initially, it's like, is there something the man is doing that is making the wife to be jealous? And I'm saying that when we are talking about jealousy, it's not prompted by action or inaction of any man. It is a personal thing. You see something, somebody that you like that you don't have, and you envy the person. Jealousy and envy goes together. In fact, another word for jealousy, synonym for jealousy is envy. But we're now saying, okay, even if this woman has this as a character or as a flaw, the responsibility of every man is to work at boosting the self-esteem of his wife. I have children that have low self-esteem that I worked on and they are better off. So I'm saying that the man should work. And which way did I do and do my own wife? 
I make my wife, there's no way I'm going. Any party I go with my wife, I celebrate my wife. I bought my wife's makeup kit. I, I showcase her to make people to know that this is my own accelerator. If you're not going to accept her, I can be your friend. So I put her there as my face. Who is the face of Olushola? It is my wife. I'm telling you, with that, she developed confidence to meet with people. What she's doing today as a profession, she wouldn't have done it. It's because I told her, you can do it. You have the capacity. So you need to begin to build, you know, all women are not the same. And you know, and if you just drop your wife at all, and she's the only one muttering to herself, and she sees you out there flying, mm. ah, she will say, if I can't have you, they won't have you. It will be a battle. And it is not witchcraft. It's not witchcraft. It's just possessiveness. She feels she's losing you. She feels she's been abandoned and somebody else is taking your time. If I'm a woman, I will behave like that. It's not a sickness. It's just natural. You can't compare jealousy and envy towards an outsider with when it is your husband. It's a different ball game. I don't, I'm not, I, I, I'm, you can't say I'm envying my husband, I want him dead. No, I just feel that there's something about him that I need to have that I'm not having and somebody is having it. And I said, no, this one is meant for me. So that's why I'm, it's, it's like I'm putting the responsibility on the man. But also, let me come back to the woman. Can you own up and tell yourself the truth that you actually have a problem? And that is what we call self-awareness. When you are aware that you have a problem, then you can seek for help. At this point, you can request the help of a therapist, somebody like me. Then I will sit you down and I will ask you, why do you feel jealous? Is it because you are lonely? There's a difference between being alone and being lonely. Your husband is still with you, but you feel a sense of loneliness that is within. It's psychological. Can we deal with that? Are there things in your past, significant emotional experience, that make you feel that is reminding you about what is happening in your life and you feel that this is the last hope that you have and yet this man is not there for me? You understand? Let's be able to hear from the woman. It's the man that we heard from. He's the one that reported. But we have not heard. What, we are even, what the man is even called need jealousy may not even be jealousy. Are you understanding me? Because you only are the side of the man. Okay. And it's perception. That's the way the man perceives it. But the woman may have a different story. Because it's rare. There must be something. When you talk about the word jealousy, it goes with anger. Jealousy can make somebody to kill. So we need to hear from this woman. And since we don't have the opportunity to hear because she's not there, and she's not the one that put in the question, we need to just look at it. I said, okay, woman, even if there's anything that warrants this jealousy, I want you to know that if your emotion gets the best of you, it will reveal the worst of you. Because emotions get the best of you, it will reveal the worst of you. Because you know what? Wherever the emotion takes way, intellect is suspended. You have done something before you realize that you have done it. People who kill their husband never plan to kill their husband. That's why they said, it's the devil. I don't know what came over me. Because at that particular time, they were strangulated by their feelings. They were, they were hosted. They were imprisoned by their emotion. We call it neural shutdown, neural arrest. You know, our body is made off of neurons that fires, that controls what we do. When that neurons are, you experience a neural hijack here. When you experience a neural hijack, that means you are no longer in control of yourself. Something is pushing you. Or when you do that thing, then your eyes will be clear. You this woman, you are saying, woman, you need help. If you are the woman and you are listening to me, you need help. Any woman outside there that you normally experience this neural hijack to a point whereby you abuse, you curse, you even beat, you stab, and you take cold hot water to go and pour on the lady that you feel your husband is having an affair oh, with. Man. Or man. You understand? Vice versa. Well, how do you explain a professor with suit and tie fighting with a conductor at the bus stop? His emotion taking sway. He has forgotten that he's a professor. When your emotion takes sway, you forget that you're a professor. Or how do you explain a 65-year-old 
professor in university begging for sex from a 15 year old undergraduate. Show to your fair jay, show me your jay. We be low look go farming room. I'm telling you, a 65 year old man, frustrating, frustrating for a 15 year old, 15 year old undergraduate that let me sleep with you. I will give you all the okay. Call me by name. I'm no longer professor. This I am coming by my name. Intellect is suspended all because of emotion. Don't let your emotion get the best of you. It will reveal the animalistic behavior, the monster inside you. So I'm speaking to that woman. I'm not condemning you, and I'm not saying that you are truly jealous. But if you sense it, because you will know, you know yourself more than anybody. Seek for help so that it won't push you. To a point where you now do something that you will regret because your husband is saying that you are embarrassing him. I mean, yes, he mentioned that his boss in the office. You understand? Office. For 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 crying out loud, why, why the boss? I watched a, a, a clip like that on social media that the wife just turned into the office. I was abusing the the a woman sitting there. Is this the nasty dog? That you are, that is not making you to pick my call. And the other one said, You are just speaking to my boss. This is my boss. And they did now kept quiet. Can you see? It does happen. Even if you are angry that your husband did not pitch, pick your call, why should you transfer it to the person? You don't even know the relationship between you of them. Sometimes this thing can be real. I'm telling you, it, it does happen. But I'm saying that if you are a woman like that, you need help. Seek for help before your character destroys your personality. This is very, very in-depth and I see this play out a lot. Yeah. It may be subtle at some point. Yeah. But we see that it increases over time. Yeah. Such that it starts from the little things from when you're greeting that security man to I don't want you to talk to anybody. But then again, there are some people that feel like if this person, my spouse is jealous, Mm. This person doesn't want me to interact. That's like a proof of love. Is that a myth? Is it real or it should be stopped? It's, it's witchcraft. And then they now have reference. Say God is a jealous man. Ah, it's witchcraft. You are trying to possess and dominate somebody's life. Don't choose my friend for me. My friend doesn't have to be your friend. I can make your friends to be my friend, but they don't have to really to be my friend. Let's appreciate each other. Don't come into marriage to control anybody. It's not permitted. You don't control people in marriage. Let me say to our viewers, please, let's change our philosophy about marriage. It's not about controlling people. It's about influencing one another. There's a difference between control and influence. I'm telling you, you get the best when you influence than controlling. I'm a free man. My wife is a free woman. I'm telling you. I get back home. Is food ready, not ready? I go to the kitchen. I cook my food and I eat. I wash my plates for, so, for several years till today. I'm still washing my plates. When I finish with it, I take my plates to the kitchen and I wash. This conversation is another one that we've seen <sighs> again regarding chores and who should do what. The Olua T. You are shaking the table, Olua T. <laughs> Chores. Okay. This is another major part I'm there of for marriage you. that a lot of people would argue on. And so, on this note, let's come to the end of this episode because we have to pay our bill. Mm. Our sponsors are waiting. And so, our dear viewers and listeners, we've come to the end of another exciting episode of the BRR show. I know you wanted more. I also did. But this is all we can take on this week's episode of the show. See you again, same time, same station. God bless you. For now. <laughs>